Welcome to the video. In this session, we want to simulate the bulge forming process in Abacus software. In this video, we will cover a basic introduction to the bulge forming process, a basic introduction to axisymmetric modeling, demonstrating a simple bulge forming problem, step by step simulation of bulge forming in Abacus software. If you are interested in simulating forming process using Abacus software, please watch the video till the end. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get new video updates. Bulge forming is a process in which a fluid expands in a rubber bladder within a cavity dye tool. A sheet metal blank is fed to this process and one can create a predetermined shape reflected by the inner contour of the cavity dye tool. Bulge forming is an axial loading, cold forming process. It is generally used to form cylindrical and spherical components from super alloy materials. This process can produce complex shapes even with non-symmetrical features and with uniform wall thickness. Now let's talk about the simulation of bulge forming process in Abacus software. Since the loading and geometry of the bulge forming process are axially symmetric, we can use axisymmetric feature of a box software. The axisymmetric analysis allows you to analyze a 3D problem which is rotationally symmetric about an axis. Therefore, the computational cost of a 3D problem reduces significantly using axisymmetric analysis. As a simple example, to simulate bulge forming per se, we just need two parts, a die and a blank. Using appropriate loading and boundary condition, bulge forming process can be simulated. Let's head to the Abacus software and begin our journey to the finite element simulation of bulge forming. In the part module, you can create the required parts of your problem. For this aim, you must click on the Create Part icon. Then, enter an appropriate name for the part. Like, Die. Select the modeling space of the part, which is axisymmetric. Select the type of the part. Since Die exhibit no deformation during bulge forming process, you must select Analytical Rigid. Enter an appropriate approximate size based on the dimension of the part. The default value is OK. Now, click the Continue button. For creating the die part, select the Create Lines icon and draw two lines, similar to the die geometry. You can modify the radius of the die using the Add Dimension icon, which was 50 mm for inner section and 60 mm for the outer section. Click the Create Fillet icon to make a fillet with a radius of 5 mm in the die section. First enter the value, then select two corresponded lines. Die part is ready, and click the Done button. When a rigid part is created, a reference point is required. This point is used as a reference for the 6 degrees of freedom of rigid motion. And you must define the reference point in this module. For this aim, click Tools tab in the main menu bar and select Reference Point. Then you can choose any point related to the rigid part. Die part is complete. Now, head to the second part, which is blank part. Similarly, select the Create Icon part. Enter an appropriate name. Choose Axisymmetric, which already is. Choose the type of part, which is deformable, since blank part exhibit deformation in this problem. For basic feature, select the shell feature. The default approximate size is OK. Click the Continue button to sketch the geometry. For creating the blank part, you only need to draw a rectangular section of the part. Thus, select the rectangle icon. Enter 0 and 0 as the first point and enter 55 mm and 1 mm as the second point. Blank geometry is complete and click the Done button. Both parts are created successfully. Now, enter the property module. For creating a material for the blank part, which is a deformable part, click the Create Material icon. 
Enter an appropriate name for the material. For defining elastic behavior of the deformable part, select mechanical tab, then select elasticity, and then elastic. You can select the type of material behavior using this drop-down menu. For this example, steel has isotropic mechanical behavior. Two constants are required for defining an isotropic material, which are Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Before entering the values, you must know in which units you are entering. Always follow this table in terms of units. So you can analyze the final results. Since parts were created in millimeters, Young's modulus must be entered in megapascals. For defining the plastic behavior, follow this path. Select Mechanical tab, then, select Plasticity, and then Plastic. Hardening type is considered to be isotropic, for this example. You must enter yield stress and strain values in this window. Plastic behavior can be obtained from uniaxial tensile test. For more information of how to, you can watch our previous video specifically made on this topic. We copy and paste the plastic behavior data in the window. Remember that plastic strain must start with zero. You can access the properties using the link in the description. Don't forget to follow the recommended units when entering the material data. Properties are complete, click the OK button. Now, you have to create section for the deformable parts. Click the Create Section icon. Enter an appropriate name. For this example, the section is solid and homogeneous. Click Continue button. Here you choose the material type from the drop-down menu. Click the OK button. Section is defined, now you must assign it to the corresponded part, which is blank in this example. Click the Assign Section icon. Select the deformable part in the viewport. Click OK button. Select an appropriate section in the drop-down menu. And click OK button. You can notice the color change of the blank part after assigning the properties. Property module is complete. Note that there is no need to define property for the rigid part. And according to the problem, you don't have to assign any mass or inertia for the die part. Now, we enter the assembly module. To import the created parts into the assembly module, you must select Create Instance icon. Choose the part name to import it to the assembly module. You can import all parts by holding the Shift key and selecting the parts. There is no difference between dependent or independent type. The only difference is in the mesh generation process. You can also activate Auto Offset to import parts with offset from each other. For translating the parts, select Translate Instance icon. Select the instance to translate, which is blank, in this example. For the start point, select this point of the blank part. And for the end point, select this point of the die part. Assembly module is done. Let's head to the next module, which is Step. To define the solver type, select the Create Step icon. In this window, enter an appropriate name. You can select solver type based on the problem. This problem can be solved using static general or dynamic explicit solver type. For this example, choose static general step. Click the continue button. A new window shows up, which gives the settings of the static general step. Time period is the total duration of the problem and the default value is 1. Since blank undergoes nonlinear deformation, you have to activate the nonlinear geometry. In the Incrementation tab, there are important settings regarding the implicit solver and these settings affect the convergence rate of solver. Based on experience, for this example, it is recommended to increase the maximum number of increments from 100 to 1000. Then, set initial increment size to 0.01 instead of default value of 1. And lastly, reduce the maximum increment size to 0.1, instead of default value of 1. Now click the OK button. There is a possibility to request field output or history output in the step module, though, for this example, there is no need to define. We are done here. Let's move to the interaction module. 
For defining the interaction between the die and blank parts, click on the Create Interaction Property icon. Enter an appropriate name. There are various interaction types. For this example, choose Contact and click the Continue button. A new window shows up. Define tangential behavior from Mechanical tab. To make it simple, let the friction formulation to be frictionless. Click the OK button. Now the contact property is defined, and we need to apply it between the parts. For this aim, select the Create Interaction icon. Enter an appropriate name. Choose the step. It is recommended to define contacts in the initial step to help with convergence issue. Choose Surface to Surface Contact and click the Continue button. For Master Surface, it is highly recommended to select Rigid Parts, which is Die, in this problem and select yellow color. For the slave surface, select the outer surface of the blank. In this window, there are some settings regarding the contact interaction. For this problem, let the sliding formulation to be finite sliding and discretization method to be surface to surface and choose contact interaction property from the drop down menu bar. Select the OK button. We are done here in the interaction module. Let's enter the load module. To define boundary condition in accordance with the problem, click the Create Boundary Condition icon. Enter an appropriate name. Choose the step from the drop-down menu and select Symmetry Boundary Condition Type and click the Continue button. Select the reference point of the die part and choose the last option in the window, which fix all degrees of freedom of the die part. Do the similar process for the right vertical edge of the blank. This edge of blank is between two dies and has no displacement. Therefore, we can fix all degrees of freedom. For defining pressure on the blank, select the Create Load icon. Enter an appropriate name. Select the step from the drop-down menu. Select the Pressure option and click the Continue button. Now select the lower edge of the blank. In the pop-up window, Enter the pressure value as megapascals. It is possible to create an amplitude for the applied load. However, for this problem, let the amplitude to be ramp. We are done with the boundary and loading conditions. Let's head to the mesh module. There is no need to generate mesh on analytical rigid parts or the die part. For the blank part, you can generate mesh on the part with appropriate size and element type. At first, select the Assign Mesh Controls icon. Select the blank part. Choose Quad Element Shape and Structure Technique in this window. Then, select the Seed Part Instance icon and choose the blank part from the viewport. In this window, you can modify the element size to discretize the blank part. For this problem, it is recommended to use at least four elements along the thickness direction to achieve acceptable results. Now select the Assign Element Type icon. Select the blank part in the viewport. The solver type is standard. Therefore, you must select standard in this section. The problem is being solved using axisymmetric elements, thus the family should be axisymmetric. Between linear and quadratic, it is recommended to select linear and also reduced integration for forming problems. Select the OK button. For generating the mesh on the part, select Mesh Part Instance icon. Select the blank part in the viewport. And click Done. We are done here. Now let's move to the Job module. To solve the problem, you must create a job. For this aim, select the Create Job icon. Enter an appropriate name. And then press Continue button. There are some settings in this window. You can accelerate the solving procedure by clicking the Parallelization tab. Activate the Use Multiple Processors feature and increase the number of processors. Click the OK button to define the job. To submit the job, click the Job Manage icon. Click the job you want to run. And click the Submit button. You can observe the solver progress by clicking the Monitor button. Additionally, in this window you can see the errors, warnings, and other data regarding the problem being solved. 
When the job is completed, the status is converted from running to completed. You can observe the results by clicking the result icon. You can observe the stress or strain contours in the visualization module. You can also animate the forming process. In Visualization module, you can sweep the axisymmetric problem to observe the problem in 3D state. Click the ODB Display Options icon. Go to Sweep, Extrude tab. Activate Sweep Elements and Sweep Analytical Rigid Surfaces. And click the OK button. Thanks for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please support our team with like and subscribe and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Don't forget to visit our site for more related products. Have a great time.